Hey, this is Sleeper, and this is my OSCP exam experience and journey. Before we get into that, here is what it looked like exam day. Be right back, bathroom. Be right back, coffee. Be right back, bathroom. Be right back, coffee. Be right back, dinner. I'm going to bed now. Good morning. Be right back, coffee. Is that a typo? Oh my god. So my preparation for the OSCP is as follows. I got seriously into penetration testing last year, wanted to take the PMPT first as a stepping stone towards the OSCP. So I went through the PEH, the materials for that course, and I took my first attempt in November last year. I failed that, unfortunately, um, because I was studying for another cert through work. My attention was divided decided to solely focus on that work certification, busted that out, and then after that I gave myself a few weeks to kind of review the PNPT material. And that wasn't enough. Um, I would say my kind of hacking and extra boxes outside of the material was little to none, um, aside from I took a cybersecurity boot camp, did a little try hack me and some boxes through that, but other than that I didn't get as much hands-on experience as I should have. So after those three weeks, I took a second attempt at the PNPT and then failed again. <laughs> so that was uh, a learning experience in itself. I uh, would, would not recommend uh, taking any examination <laughs> if you are not uh, fully capable and prepared, um, even though I believed that I was. And so thus begins my PWK and OSCP journey. Um, from that, I wanted to dive into the PWK material. I had purchased the material, uh, you know, in December last year. Uh, they had like a promotion, and so when I finally started, it was about February and March. I started first. I took a couple weeks to kind of glance through the PDF, kind of just first eye, first take of the material, see what. It, types of things it covers, not really going deep into kind of understanding everything, just kind of glancing through the material. After that, I started going through the exercises. So actually reading the material um, module by module, chapter by chapter, and doing the exercises that corresponded. At that time, I thought to myself again, do I want to kind of do this on my own? Do I want to do the OSCP with no assistance? Or do I need kind of a structure and, and guided approach? And so to increase my chances of passing, I signed up for Evolve's OSCP bootcamp. And that was absolutely necessary for my success in the OSCP. I feel as though going through the boot camp as well as going through the PWK material on my own, it kind of doubly effect, affected my success. Um, kind of having that self-study but then also having that guided um, approach with an experienced penetration tester. And so I worked through most of the exercises and PWK material, but two weeks until the end of the boot camp, it was an eight week boot camp, I stopped the exercises and focused on just studying for the final. So the final for the OSCP boot camp was a mock OSCP exam. So I was going to get a 24, exam, 24 hour exam to practice at the end of that. So I did that, I passed that, and that definitely gave me like a confidence boost. Like, okay, if I can do this, then maybe I can pass the OSCP. So I jumped back into the exercises after the boot camp final, and I finished those, and then I started to work towards those 30 labs necessary for the bonus points. That's when like burnout was starting hard. Um, they recommended eight weeks to schedule the OSCP eight weeks after the end of the boot camp, 
so I scheduled it for the end of June and about a month later to six weeks later that's when I finally finished the 30 boxes and exercises and by that time I was just so burnt out um, I started re repetition kind of with the OSCP sets specifically the active directory sections because that I knew it was going to be very important but by week six and seven that's when I was like oh man I wish I could just take this already um, because of scheduling conflicts I had to push it back so I pushed it back another week so it was actually nine weeks after the end of the boot camp July 1st is when I took it and so I think that's basically everything that I did to prepare for the OSCP. So this was my exam experience. So there was the, you know, the background check or the ID verification with the proctor and the examination of the exam room. For me, it was laundry day. So there was clothes all over the living room <laughs> as I did a 360 of that. Um, I had my laptop and I had one additional monitor attached, but for work I used two monitors. So when I showed them my desk, they were like, you have an extra monitor. And I said, I'm not using it. And they said, you need to get rid of it. So I took it off and then I was settled. But behind me <laughs> was my, I don't know, 60 inch television. And they're like, oh, I noticed there's another big monitor behind you. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, the monitor. Um, you mean the TV? They're like, yeah, you're going to need to cover that up. So I just grabbed a blanket and covered that up. Um, I, I heard from someone else that they had to literally dismount their television from the wall <laughs> and take it out of the room. But luckily, I was okay. So here's the timeline. What I did at the start was I cycled through the targets. I wanted to do an hour each. Um, just to get a feel of what was going on on each and so I started with the Active Directory because it was it is most valuable on the exam. I took an hour there no progress. I moved on to the first standalone machine I call it box 4 and nothing there. When I moved to box 5 within 30 minutes I found the user flag and so I was feeling good so I took a break, 15 minute break to probably eat a snack, something like that. When I came back, I moved on to the last stand alone machine. I caught box six here. I was there for about an hour and a half, um, trying, trying, but getting nowhere. So the most promising box was the one I got the user flag on. So I moved back to that for about an hour and don't know if I made any progress there. So I took another half hour break, took a long walk. 30 minutes later, I come back refreshed to work on that. And within the next hour or so, I got root on the second standalone machine that I call box five here. So for about 15 minutes, I gathered the screenshots that I needed and carried on. I moved back to the Active Directory box from 6 to around 8.30. And around 8.30 was when I got a shell, finally, on the, the Active Directory set. It was pretty tricky, I would say. Um, so with that, tried for another hour either to pivot or to privilege escalate but I had no success there so I took another break at 9 30 p.m. pretty getting pretty tired there so it says 10 to 10 54 about another hour that's when I finally got the privilege uh, the NT authority on the first box of the 80 set and moved it to a shell. So um, that was that. That was towards the end of the night. 
It's getting rough. I'm getting tired. I got way too much caffeine in my system. And I kept going until midnight, past midnight, and I was just like, mm, I'm going to need some rest. So I start again. I get up around 6. And I hop back on the Active Directory site. It's my only chance of passing because the standalone, the other two standalone machines were just something I could not comprehend. So a couple hours later, <laughs> I realize my mistake. I am looking at my IP addresses <laughs> and I realize I am one digit off. I could have progressed further the night before, but I was just so tired. I should have listened to my body and been like, I'm gonna call it here. Almost kind of like gambling. You gotta quit while you're ahead. Even though I wasn't really ahead, just listen to your body. Um, so I saw the typo and then it was in that moment I realized I got this like I got DC so I moved to I was able to pivot to the second machine in the 80 set and get what I needed and move to the DC controller and that feeling was just like so amazing <laughs> I was so happy I called my mom I was like mom <laughs> now I, I think I waited till after um, so I was able to pivot, get DC, uh, gathered screenshots after that. I tried going back to the other two machines, but I just could not prevail. So here are some takeaways from my exam experience. Definitely go for the bonus points. Cycle through your targets if you want. Take breaks. Go for a walk. Don't ever give up. Dedicate your focus, time, and energy towards learning what you need to do. Don't split your attention between things. Ask for help. No need to be prideful. It's okay to use assistance. I would not have had the confidence to pass this exam if I had not gone through the OCP bootcamp. Utilize Hack the Box and other hacking platforms to practice your skills. Use TJ Knowles OCP like boxes. Going through the Hack the Box boxes on that list after the fact definitely would have helped with my exam, but I'm seeing a lot of overlap. So it's reinforcing what I've learned and also helping what I've missed or could have gotten further with. Lastly, believe in yourself. Tell yourselves positive information, affirmations, like I will pass this exam. Really like feel what it will be like once you pass. May you obtain your OSCP, you got this. Let's succeed, let's do this. Once again, my name is Sleeper, and that's a wrap. Until next time.